G'day. Welcome to Ollie 35mm. User-based, quasi-empirical, cheap and cheerful videos on Olympus 35mm cameras. And the 35mm camera I would like to share with you today is the Olympus 35DC. So designated um, as Olympus decided that in 1971 they wanted to call it the Deluxe Compact. Um, it certainly is uh, quite well featured and um, by the day's standards uh, it was actually a reasonably compact camera. The uh, 35SP which was around at the same time is uh, a reasonable amount bigger uh, and a little bit heavier. Now the uh, DC came out in 1971 as I said, uh, the idea behind it was it was supposed to be a, uh, an easy to use uh, camera, you didn't have to worry about it, it was a range finder so quite easy to focus uh, and the exposure was a set of programmed uh, apertures and shutter speeds which very nicely were actually shown in the viewfinder so you can actually see what the camera was actually choosing. All built around what uh, became a very popular lens, um, legendary uh, if you want, uh, with the Olympus RD which came out four years later, uh, the 40mm f1.7. Uh, it's a little six element uh, lens, not quite as sharp as the 35SP, uh, seven, seven element lens, but a very, very nice lens nonetheless, and of course 1.7, very, very bright. Uh, it uh, had um, a, an ISO range, or an ISO range of uh, 25 through to 800, and a Flashmatic system, uh, which is sitting on the top here, uh, which allowed you uh, to set the guide number of your flash, providing your flash was anywhere between 10 and 40, or guide number of 10 and 40, and uh, the camera would do the rest for you. Uh, Flashmatic was uh, look a proprietary name, I think, uh, by Olympus, uh, and quite a few of their models actually had it. Um, it's uh, actually very, very easy to use. Um, it has uh, a couple of nice little features uh, on it uh, as well, which you wouldn't uh, normally expect from uh, some of the cameras of the day. It had a self-timer on it, a little mechanical 10 second or so self-timer. It had a battery, uh, sorry, um, uh, a um, backlight compensation button. And there was actually a model with a battery check. This isn't the one though. Um, a backlight compensation button which basically uh, narrowed the um, exposure uh, area down to basically the range finder window and put a priority um, on that. So uh, it basically the center of the uh, frame uh, was pretty much where your your BLC uh, was looking at. There was also, uh, like I said, there was a model with, with a ba battery check um, and uh, this particular model didn't have a battery check. Instead, it had a little uh, F button and this F button has actually confused uh, some people uh, as to what it actually is. And the reason for it is this camera actually has a, um, a stopper or a lock, if you like, which won't allow you to take photographs uh, in light that's lower than the 1.7 and a 15th of a second uh, can actually cope with. So um, what you can actually do when you're winding on your film and you're doing it in a dark place, you can actually press uh, this um, F button down here and it will allow you to actually override that shutter lock and uh, still take the photograph so you can actually wind the film on. Of course, while you're taking photographs, if you want, you could use that as well, but why you'd want to, I'm not too sure. Uh, the program shutter speeds ran from, and I'm just actually having a quick look here because I've forgotten, uh, 1 15th of a second uh, at f1.7 through to 1 500th of a second at f16. So, uh, you know, reasonable range and probably fairly normal for the day, except for that 1.7 lens, of course, which is uh, uh, reasonably unusual. Uh, there were other models around that, that matched it, Canons and, and whatever else, but uh, you didn't see it a lot. 
All right, um, it is a very nice camera to use. As I've said, I've quite enjoyed it. Uh, I'm not a big rangefinder fan, but uh, I found uh, this one uh, nice and bright, um, easy to use, easy to focus, quite accurately focused. Um, I think it's had a CLA before I actually bought it, uh, which uh, certainly helps. And uh, if you buy yourself a rangefinder, I would suggest that you do get a clean lubricate and adjust and get a, a proper technician to actually make sure um, that it's all hunky-dory for you. The only downside to this, as with many cameras of the day, uh, is, is it takes a PX625 1.35 volt mercury battery, which you can no longer get. However, don't despair. Uh, you can get um, zinc air uh, batteries, which uh, will last about four months or so, um, that will actually replace it at that um, uh, at that voltage you can get uh, your camera repairer if you get a CLA you can get your camera repairer to actually adjust it to take 1.5 volt batteries uh, the PX625A uh, which you can actually still buy and uh, that would be uh, a recommendation from me uh, if you were to do that uh, or you can actually get little adapters and they look like a, a 625 volt battery they've got a little diode in them and you can put in uh, generally 386 batteries uh, the 1.5 volts button cells inside it and voila from there it's just like a 1.35 volt battery so there we go the olympus 35 dc a very nice little camera not seen often it's uh not talked about often uh a little bit like the 35 ec which i've uh, um uh, reviewed beforehand it doesn't have the same uh, sort of kudos as as, as its its rd brother uh, as this doesn't have the same sort of kudos as the rc brother but still lovely little cameras in their own rights and uh, well worth having a look at so that's a lot for today thank you very much for listening thank you very much for watching we'll see you next time